Good afternoon. Welcome to the 46th Colonel Convention in Richmond, Virginia. Today is Monday. No, Tuesday. Tuesday, April 16th. The name of this session is Understanding Plus. Visiting Plus. Something plus. Visiting Plus. My name is Ed Foote. I'm from Pittsburgh. I'll be the moderator for this session. Our panelists today are Ray Brenzi from Vancouver, Burnaby, Canada, and uh, Randy Darty from Mesa, Arizona. And he had, he'll be right back in a second. Uh, we ask that you turn off all the silence, all your cell phones, and so on. We will be needing a square for each of the presenters. Uh, we don't have too many women here. I hope you will all be willing to volunteer when we do have a square because we're, we're going to need a square for all of this. So Ray Brenzi will be our first presenter and he's going to discuss the track program. Track two. Uh, hi, I'm Ray Brenzi from uh, Burnaby, British Columbia. And um, a little background, I was an educator, a teacher for 37 years before I retired a couple years ago. I've been calling for well over 50 years, and uh, like you, square dance is my passion. One of the things uh, square dance callers tend not to do when they're teaching a move is, is realizing and recognizing all the components of the move and what parts of a move are required to be masters of before they get introduced into a move. And so I would certainly like to have a square up here as I walk you through how I teach and extend track two. It would be nice if we had four guys and four girls, but that's not a requirement. Some of them are smiling, and one of them is... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so let's have the, uh, the head step into the middle, face your corner, and then star through. Go ahead and pass through. So when I'm teaching track two, before we even start, I want to make sure my dancers have a very good understanding of how to do a partner trade. It's a huge component of a track two. All right, so for this position, we all know that we're going to trade places with each other, walking in a circular action, and because we're going to pass somebody along our path, we pass right shoulders with them. Go ahead and do a partner trade. And I would probably spend a whole tip or make sure the week before I teach track two that these people could do it from any given position. Pass through right here. And you can play with partner trades many different ways. You could say, do a partner trade once and a half. Go ahead, partner trade once, half of another one giving you an ocean wave. Boys are holding left hands. Boys trade. Boys run around the girls. Everybody bend the line. Pass through. Everybody do a half sachet. Or that instead. Good. From here, we would say, you can carry a partner trade into a uh, couple ships where the gentlemen are on the uh, non-standard side. Go ahead and do a partner trade. Make sure they know how to pass right shoulders with each other. Nicely done. Everybody touch a quarter. Go ahead and roll. Pass through. You might extend partner trades and say, I'd like you to do a left partner trade. And then you would explain, a normal partner trade has a right shoulder passing rule to it. So if I ask you to do a left, uh, left partner trade, you're doing a partner trade, but you're going to pass left shoulders instead of right shoulders. Go ahead and do a left partner trade with each other. Nice again. So all those components are really good foundations for being able to do a track two. Go ahead and pass through. Wheel and deal. Center four. Or you can do that instead. Center four, pass through. Step to an ocean wave and swing through. All the boys run around the girls. The second thing that's a component of knowing how to track two is knowing how to tag. And if you know how to tag the line, you can build an understanding in your dancer's mind of why the call was called track two. 
And part of learning how to do a tag the line is understanding the concept of extending. So if I was teaching tag the line from now, I would ask all the dancers to identify the center of their line, and I would ask them to all turn one quarter to face the center of the line. And depending on your dancers, you would spend as much time as you need to. I would then point out to them that we have started to tag the line, and you're standing in tag the line zero. Zero position. I would then go on to explain that the first part of a tag the line is an extend. Now extend from here means, hold on, it means everybody take a step forward. So as the girls step forward to an ocean wave, the boys take a step forward to close up the gap. Everybody extend. So I would point out to them that this is the first tagging position. We went from the zero tagging position to the first tagging position. Then I would say extend. We have now moved forward to the second tagging position. We quite often know this as the half tag position because there are four tagging positions. You're halfway through, you're in the half tag position. But for our, our point, we're going to say this is the second tagging position. Go ahead and extend. We have gone to the third tagging position and go ahead and extend. And we're now, it looked like we completed the double pass through, but this is the fourth tagging position. Go ahead and face in and pass through. Go ahead and start to tag the line, but don't go anyway. Just turn to face the center of your line. And everybody extend to the first tag position. Now, once upon a time, and I'm looking around, most of you have been around as long as I have, we never used to call the call extend. The call was extend the tag because extend was all based on tag the lines, going from one tag position to the next to the next. Extend your tag to the second tag in position. Extend your tag. You're now in a third tag in position, and extend your tag. Boys step forward, and the girls step forward, and of course, we did. All these components are part of track two, and if your dancers have a good understanding of that, then you'll be doing just great. Go ahead and face in. Pass the ocean. Do a single hinge, boy trade, run around the girl. Now if we were doing tag the lines, we might say half tag. <coughs> now added to mainstream, we have quarter tag, and we have three quarter tag, all components of tag the line. But if I was going to be presenting a track two, I might modify it and say, would you tag the line to the third position, please? Go ahead. That would be when the boys meet in the ocean wave and the girls are on the outside. Go ahead, girls, do a partner trade. Extend. Single hinge. Girl trade. Explode your wave. Wheel and deal. This is a rush class. Good. Double pass through. It's a blast. A blast class. So now I'm ready to teach track two because I know my dancers know how to do a partner trade. I know my dancers understand the concept of tagging the line. So we're going to get here and I'm going to tell my dancers, I said, so we're going to kind of do a partner trade to start our track two, but we're going to do it, and I probably wouldn't use the word tandem, but we're going to do it in tandem. So I would say the dancers who are in the center of the square, I'd like you to put your one hand on the dancer who's in front of you, the shoulder of the dancer who's in front of you. So now I have four entities. I have two guys together as one entity, and two girls together as another entity. And I would like you as an entity to go ahead and do a partner trade with each other. So the girls as an entity would partner trade with the boys, going single file. When they finish the partner trade, I would say, you just did a track to the zero position. This is, in fact, a track zero, which has been added to the C1 list now. I would say now, I would like you to let go of those hands and extend to the first tagging position. Nice. Extend again to the second tagging position. Hold it, guys. You just did a track to the second tagging position. Why don't we call this track two? Because you did a track and extend it to the second position, you have done a track two. Go ahead and extend. You might consider this the track three position. Go ahead and extend. And no, oh, no, oh, just straight ahead. Yeah, this would have been where track four would end. Okay, so once again from this position, we are going to do uh, a tandem 
partner trade with each other. So go ahead and put your hand on the shoulder in front of you. Go ahead and go ahead and partner trade with that entity beside you. Let go of the hands and extend to the second position. One and two, and you accomplish the track two. And so now the dancers have a tool. They have a, a rule that gets them to a place and they have a reason for the call being called what it is, and they have an understanding. Rather than just saying, I want you guys to wander around the outside of the square, go halfway down, and you guys take the inside route and wander down, you're all on a train track and you're gonna to get to a certain position and this is the ending position. It's much better if you build a concept in your dancer's mind about what they're actually doing. And then when you're ready to extend this call, swing through. Boy, run around the girl. Tag the line, go all the way through. And now I've got a completed double pass through it for the tapes. I've got the girls in the lead and the boys behind. I said, this would be your next step up the difficulty level weeks down the road when they're ready to do it. Guys, go ahead and put your hand on the girl's shoulder. And go ahead and do a tandem partner trade with each other. You've just track zeroed. And then I'd like you to extend twice to the second tagging position. And you've got to track two. Scoot back. Boy, run around the girl. This is a good square. Do it right on left through. You must all be Canadians. Okay. Go ahead and pass through. Wheel and deal. Double pass through. For sake of getting there fast. Everybody do a half sachet. Nice, and if we did it from here, of course, you've got complete different roles, not just one set. And so, from here, you just want to make sure they understand their partner trade rule. You're working in tandem. Go ahead and touch shoulders if you want to. And go ahead and do a tandem partner trade with each other. You've made it to the track zero position. And remember, as we tag, we pass right shoulders, so go ahead and extend twice to the second position, and you've accomplished the track two. Do a single hinge. Boy, run around the girl. When you're ready to extend it just a little further, everybody pass through, do a wheel and deal. And this is weeks down the road, but they ask us to look at some extensions. Go ahead and do a double pass through. You might say, I'd like to do a left track too. Well, the only thing about a left track, well, there's two components. First of all, we looked at earlier and understood how to do a left partner trade. So go ahead and hook up and put your hands on the shoulder of the person in front of you. And instead of doing a partner trade, we're going to do a left partner trade in tandem. That means we're going to pass left shoulders with each other. Go ahead and do a left partner trade with each other. And because it's a left track two, as we're tagging down the line, we're going to pass left shoulders and then instead of right shoulders. And go ahead and extend leftedly to the second tagging position. And you've done a left track two. All the boys trade. Boy run around the girl. Nicely done. Bend the line. Everybody pass the ocean. How else can we extend this call? Boys run around the girls. Do a Ferris wheel. So, well, that's, that's a few down the road, but do a double pass through. If you wanted to extend this call some more, other than doing non-standard track twos or left track twos, the next difficulty is maybe just the boys do a track two. But before we do that, let's have all the girls do a U-turn back. Okay, so this is a little gimmick that can go with it. The boys have tracked two long enough that they can figure out the route that they're going to go. So guys, go ahead and do your part of a track two. Coming down, girls extend twice. We have a nice line of four right there. Bend the line. Do a right on that third. Nice. Pass third. Wheel and deal. And of course, the natural extension double pass through would be to say, hey, if we can tag to the zero, one, two, three, or four position, we should be able to track to those. So I could call anything from track zero to track four. And they should be able to get it. If I said do a track four, everybody would tend to partner trade. Go ahead. <coughs> And then we would extend four times. It would feel like a double pass through. And you track to the fourth position. Now that was the fastest cram course that I've ever done before. <laughs> the lead two do a partner trade. Nicely done. Single circle do away. 
All the good looking ones trade in the middle, run around the girls. Do a Ferris wheel, you've got to throw the boys a bone every once in a while. <laughs> Double pass through and track to the second position. Track and extend twice. Yeah, that's how I call it when I'm first doing it. I don't call it a track to. I start getting them think that they're tracking to a second position. And then down the road I get lazy and I call track two. Can I ask you a question? I don't know where the washroom is, uh, Mr. Downer. Okay, oh, that's on tape. I shouldn't stay up. You guys okay? Do they need to stay? No, I have a question about what you said earlier. Okay, you said earlier you avoid using the word tandem um, the first time you introduce it. So what words do you use to get the idea of the, uh, the tandem thing? Swing through. I, you know, it all depends who I'm calling to and what I feel comfortable with. Boys run around and girls. Americans is different than Canadians. Ferris wheel. No, but I have singles clubs versus kids versus uh, sure. adult club. Double pastor. But I use things like uh, the dancers in the middle put both hands on the shoulders of the person in front of you. And guys with the two girls next to you without disconnecting with each other, go ahead and do a partner trade. Stay in that grip. I might do something like that. Double pass through. I often use terms like the entity next to you. Go ahead and hook your hands on the shoulder of the person in front of you. And uh, guys with the entity of girls that are right next to you, go ahead and do a partner trade with each other. I would use terms like that because tandem is a, is a challenge concept. And I don't want them to have to think that they need to start learning things that they don't need to know. Even though track two in the definition is written as start with a tandem partner trade. It's kind of silly to ask you to do something you have no concept of, which makes it difficult. All right, would you like to stay up here? Would you like to sit down for a little break? Well, do you guys have any questions? No, so we can let you relax for a second if you want. Thank you very much for uh, being on the floor and, and doing what I asked. I owe you all a dream. Any questions at this point? from the floor on how I would introduce and teach track two. Now that was a that was a crash course, but you know, I would have done the tag the lions and I would have done the partner trades the week before. I would have done the standard track to the second position in one lesson. And I wouldn't have even visited non-standard and extensions until they have a very good understanding of track two. Thank you guys. Uh, I just have that 
approach when I teach. So when track two really got voted, we had, it was back in the days of the plus one and the plus two stuff, they actually uh, had track three and track one, didn't they, Mike? Yeah. Is yeah. that a call? Okay, my call is, uh, and by the way, I was just asked a week ago to fill in for Charlie Robertson. He canceled out, and uh, he's not here. So uh, the call was fan the top. So to give you a little history, uh, fan the, fans were invented in 1867 by a guy named Robert somebody. <laughs> is that what you usually do? You give the history? I, I was a fan of yours before then. <laughs> yeah, could <have> been. <laughs> Anyway, our call is Fan the Top, which used to be mainstream, now it's plus. I hated to have it go from mainstream up to plus, but that's my personal opinion. Um, fan the Top is a four beat, as far as timing goes. Um, and it gives us our definition from ocean waves. That's the, probably the first uh, way to begin teaching it if you were doing it on a class type situation. If you were kind of going into uh, refining that a little bit later where the dancers have been dancing three or four years, you might get into some of the other examples I'm gonna talk about. But usually an ocean wave is where you start from. Now, do you start it from parallel waves? Do you start it from a tidal wave? I have found that if I go uh, parallel waves to start with, it's hard to get them to go to the tidal. So what I do is I start in the tidal wave, right-handed, and then go to parallel waves, because parallel waves, they can see those a lot better, I think. And the definition says that the centers do a turn 270 degrees, or three-quarter turn, and the ends, I believe it says something to the effect that they move up in an arc one quarter in their force. Something to that, okay? I don't like the move up a quarter type thing, so the way that I do it, can I have uh, four dancers, just four? They can all be the same sex, I right? doesn't matter. Go ahead, get in there. So let's make our ocean wave across. So another little hint that I give the dancers is what you have is what you get. So take a look at what you have in your right hand. What you see is what you get. That's just another hint. Girls are the centers. Bo, you're now connected as a girl, okay? So the centers turn the 270s, which is nothing more than a trade, do the trade, and then I tell them to do another half of a trade, that's the three-quarter. Boys, look down the other end. You're going to move up in an arc, but do like a half a trade. Just go up and hook onto the end. What you saw is what you got. And that's the way I teach it for the very first time. The girls in the middle, boys on the ends. If you keep practicing fan the top, from here, of course, the girls are going to keep going around and they get dizzy. But I also do this on purpose because I tell them, if the centers let go of their hand, that's where the bolt with the nut is for the fan. Think of a ceiling fan, and if they let go of that bolt and that comes loose, the fan blades fly out and cut up the men kind of pretty bad. So don't let go of your lefty girls. Fan the top. Always do half a trade. And that's the way I usually do it for the very first time. Do it right and left through. Okay, it says what's good for the yin and yang and all of that. Let's make a left-handed ocean wave. And now I go through the same process. The center's turning three quarters or 270. If they're a pilot, the 270 really works good. If they're not an airplane pilot, they need the three quarter turn thing. Girls look down at the other end and see the other girl. You're gonna do a half a trade with each other. So the girls just do a half a trade. Centers go three quarter by the right. What you saw is what you got. I asked the dancers, and I don't expect an answer, but I said, now, is that called left fan the top? And they'll go, yep. And I'll say, nope. Because we are in a left-hand wave, it doesn't matter. Okay? Boys in the center cross run. Ladies trade. Swing through. Boy run. Chain down your line. I forgot where you started. Flutter wheel, I think this is not like I'm resolving, so I guess I can quit right here. Uh, the next time I get into doing it from facing couples, 
And again, you have to remind them, hey, if I call swing through from here, what do you do? You automatically step to a right hand wave. For fan the top, you automatically step to a right hand wave from threes and couples. Do a fan the top. Girls hook up the bolt and the nut, then the men move up. Go right, left through, and you turn to that girl. Okay? So they're in facing couples again, but they're stirred. Make sure you give them that information. If you do it from the heads, put the axis going the other way so you got it from the sides. And now uh, for the tape, they're in the side couples positions. Fan the top. Don't just stop, spin the top. Spin the top. Right and left through. Okay, you getting dizzy yet? Okay, okay. So I, I do it from the wave, I do it from a left hand wave, and now I do it from facing couples. And usually the following week when they've answered the left hand the top question incorrectly, then I say, there is a left hand the top. But it's only from this position. And when you put the word left in front of the word fan the top, when you're in facing couples, it means step to a left-handed wave, but the centers will use their right hand. Don't ever call that unless you get a warning of it, because most answers are going to step to a lefty and they're going to do a left spin the top. You don't want that. Left fan the top, always use rights. What you see is what you got. Recycle. Pass the ocean. Boy, run. Right about here, I might do this position, which is now two face lines. And again, boys, you now look at that girl that's beside you. What you got is not what you're going to get. So I go back and I make sure that they realize it's not the same idea as the wave is. The centers are still going three quarters and the ends are still moving up like a half a trade, but you're not going to get the person that you're with. All right? Fan the top, boy, but the left three quarter and the girl move up a quarter and there you go. Okay? Cast off three quarter. Left fan the top. Well, it's close. <laughs> Recycle. <coughs> Star through. Okay, so we're there. Let's say now these people have been with you and they've been dancing a whole year. They're really accomplished at a fan the top from lines, from other spots. There's only a couple other places that I might use it from. And then after that, you know, I might wait three or four years. If they've been with my Plus TBD group for a long time, then I go into, you know, deep, deep water. So from here, uh, let's have the ladies lead Dixie style to a wave. Boys hinge. We got a facing type diamond. Diamond circulate. If I now call in your diamond to fan the top, the girls can realize they're the centers. They're going how far? Three quarter. And the end's moving up a quarter. Diamond fan the top. Say, I see another diamond. Good. Cut the diamond. Left swing through. Are you still with me? Are you okay? Yeah, he's the one that suggested this. <laughs> Girls run around the guys. Boys trade. Wheel her around. Girls hinge. Diamond circulate. In your diamond, now I've got the boys in there. Okay? Watch what happens. Now, if I say diamond fan the top, we're going to go back. Don't go yet. I want to still talk. We're going to end up in another diamond. But if I say the ends go twice, doesn't end up in a diamond. Watch it. Okay, here we go. Fan the top in your diamond, but the ends go twice. Perfect. Half tag. Face in, back away. Questions, comments, concerns, panelists? Did you, can I, can I, you I, I did you, you pass the ocean? Good. Spin the top. How many parts do a spin the top? There are two parts to a spin the top, aren't they? The first part is swing half. Go ahead, swing half. The second part is fan the top. Go ahead. So why did we move that off the list? Yes, because somebody else was in charge. 
So from here, you can always have fun and say, hey, do the second half of the spin the top, which is a fan, fan of the top. Probably how fan the top came about because it was evolved from spin the top and somehow they came, came up with a call related to spin the top, fan the top. And again, it's always good to give your dancers some reason to relate it to something else in square dancing. Helps them remember it. <coughs> Recycle. Right and left through. Number one lady, walk across, split that couple. Go right around one, make a line of three. Good. Why did I do this? I don't know. Center boy, that's number three boy, would you run right? Okay, girl on the end, you turn back. I might go into doing, this is unsymmetrical stuff, of course, but I might say this. In the wave of three, girls considered to be centers fan the top. Number one boy, face to the right, touch a girl's hand. Touch her hand, not there. Good. Bend the line. Or cycle, uh, go back where you were, you had a three in one line, didn't you? Mike, were you looking that way? Okay. Everyone face the collar. I'm over here. I'm over here. <laughs> Oh yeah, there is a room full of colors, I'm sorry. <laughs> Leads in your twosome, you turn back. That's not what I wanted. Face me again. You got two twosomes, who's the leader of your twosome? Yes, do you turn back. Good, touch port. Fan the top. What's a twosome? I have no idea. It's, it's sim something similar to a tandem. <laughs> Boy, run. Bend the line, give these guys a nice hand. All right. Yes, here. Come on up, get a microphone. I'll bring it down. I'll be sure. I'll Gary Felton, Maryland. You were very specific, Randy, about doing a half a trade. Yes. Why was that as opposed to a quarter turn? As a move up in an arc? Yeah. Because it's the same difference, I guess. I, I, I use that because when you explain it, move up in an arc, first of all, they have trouble with an arc understanding that. I think they do. And if they can see the trade and see half of it, it's a half of a semicircle. So that's how I, that's the reason why. Okay, the reason I'm asking is ask them to do all eight spin the top, what do they do? They move up until they get their partners. They're not moving up a fraction. So I try to get them to move up a fraction and use the word a quarter of it. Yeah, that's nice on spin the top because, again, what you see is what you get. But on fan the top, it doesn't always come out like that where they're moving up to it. the same person that they started with. Right? So you've got to be careful. And I want them to move up exactly a quarter because if, if I'm using that call from a bar, I'm going to have them do all four do your part of ping pong school at your home. Well, not if they don't move exactly the quarter. If you were to call all eight fan the top, we have all eight spin the top, and that's part of plus, but all eight fan the top, I think, falls into our A1 program. And so that's another formation where you could expand on fan the top. Um, at the advanced level, we shouldn't be talking about that, but if we say all four couples fan the top, again, you're wandering into the deep water stuff. And that makes them walk by one and then begin the fan. And what they usually do is walk by one and they turn the one that they're coming to when they should be looking for that center bolt and nut thing. Go ahead, Mr. Palmer. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Jeff Palmer, Colorado Springs. Just is not a revelation by any means, but the uh, one where you I thought there was half side shade, box and then reach in, fan the top. I just didn't know. Just wanted to throw that in, and that's it. Yep. Thank you. And we didn't really go into all the different arrangements, too. We could have two boys with two girls, and that's coming down the road. I don't wouldn't do that the first month of fan the top form. If they were my new group, I would wait for as far as the arrangements go. Uh, with two boys looking at two girls and just calling fan the top cold. Some of you teach DVD right off the bat. I teach the definition, but I don't teach all the positions that they can do it from. When I, when I was taught fan the top in my advanced days, 
the, the caller who was teaching it informed the end dancer who was moving up around the center dancers one order, and that at a higher level, that was called an isolate. And once you tell the end dancers they're doing an isolate, that gives you a tool to talk to your dancers while they're doing it. You can say, fan the top, girls three quarter, boys isolate. And if you've taught them, give them a name for whatever they're doing to move up, you, you help them through the call as well. So that was in the 1870s? I think it was close to that. Yeah, okay. Isolate, huh? Yeah. We do that a lot up in Canada. Another eight call. Yeah, I was going to say it wasn't on Oh, question, comment? No, no I, I thought I saw someone's hand up, but I, I will make it a comment. Uh, am I doing this all wrong when I'm teaching my dancers? Tandem leaders and trailers right off the bat. Am I am I supposed to not do that? <laughs> well, what you're saying? No, leaders and trailers is now uh, definitely defined as heads, signs, boys, girls, that kind of thing that falls into that. But tandem, I don't think has been described at the mainstream level. Has it or hasn't it been? You're allowed to teach any way you want, yeah. and you're allowed to use any said. <laughs> and you're allowed to use any words that you want if you feel the dancers will understand them. If you say tandem means one in front and behind the other, the whole world kind of generally will understand that. Once you say that, they'll say, oh yeah, I see that in places, whatever. So then you can go ahead and use it. So it's just what you feel comfortable with. It's just not saying tandem, boom, right off the bat and expect them to know it. Explain what you mean, and then if you feel that phrase helps you, then run with it. No, I, not, mine is much more casual uh, when I point out, you know, you guys are in tandem. You got, uh, you got a leader, and you got one behind you, and he's straight. And I go on to whatever else I'm doing, but I use those terms. And I would say, that's often. what a tandem is, one in front, one behind. Yeah, right. Now, if I'm bored that night and I'm calling, I might just for my own personal caller entertainment value, <laughs> call something like this. I'll put them in, a, in uh, lines and say, within your box, beer left, and you got the couple's ocean wave, and then I'll say, work as couples, fan the top, take a deep pause, and then I say, fan the top, and you watch them, they'll do another as couples, even though there's overflow for them. They don't realize, oh, I'm not, instead of working here, and I'm working over there. So, it depends. Question. Mike McIntyre, Winchester, Virginia. Um, when I'm teaching Cloverleaf, I do mention to new dancers that this is a tandem formation where you have a leader and a trailer. Yeah, the perfect time to bring it up. Yeah. But I don't dwell on it, at least when I do get into track two, that they have already been exposed to the term. I've got an idea. Uh, we just need to clarify leaders and trailers that as you move up the ladder in square dancing, they take on a new connotation. And so you, if you just treat, treat it lightly, it's good. And, and a, lot of, a lot of dancers and, and so a lot of callers don't understand the concept of leaders and trailers. Um, you want to talk to them? Or you want me to? Could I have four dancers just jump up? Any four dancers? Because when we first start teaching leaders and trailers, we, we give our dancers a false impression. <clears throat> Mike, would you and your, uh, your partner do a partner trade? We often say, hey, you got leaders and you've got trailers. And they say, hello? Did they say, oh, that's because I've got somebody standing in front and somebody standing behind. But actually the concept of leaders and trailers as you move up in square dancing is such that right now there's a box of four. Do you see the box of four that they have? You can think of it as a sandbox. And the concept of leaders and trailers has it so that if you have your back to your sandbox, you're a leader. And if you're looking into your sandbox, you're a trailer. Mike, would you guys do a partner trade for me, please? Everybody in that box of four is now a trailer. All the trailers pass through. Everybody in that box of four is now a leader, and it's got nothing to do with who's standing in front of you or who's standing behind you that you're a leader or a trailer. That just happens to be a component of it. Everybody do a partner trade. Everybody touch a quarter. 
We now have leaders and trainers in the box of four, and, and dancers would understand it, but not for the right reason. The person who has their back to their box of four is the leader. The person looking into the box of four is the trainer. It's not got anything to do with somebody standing in front of somebody else in a square dance caller's mind. If you're looking out, you're the leader, go ahead and run. All the trailers pass through. All the trailers do a partner trade. And there are no trailers because they're all now become leaders. And all the leaders do a partner trade. So as you're using the concept of leaders and trainers, you don't need to get into that. But it is good that you have an understanding of what leaders and trailers truly mean as you're building a picture in your dancer's mind. I think it was last year's convention that we really got into leaders and trailers really bad. Yeah, let's let's yeah, let's continue. Oh well, wait, we a couple of hands. Yeah, we don't want to get too far off the uh, subject. I just noticed when you were doing Who are you? Ted Robert from southeastern Pennsylvania. Uh, when you had them in a box, you could you could teach scoot back and have the uh, have the trailers turn half and the outsides uh, flip over. Yeah, you can use leaders. The thing about uh, leaders and trailers, it wasn't until just recently that it got put on as one of the identifiers. And, and we had a call called Zoom that had talked about leaders and trailers, but we didn't explain what leaders and trailers were, and so it made common sense to put it into our identifiers as boys, girls, head sides, uh, the tall person in front, and all of that kind of stuff. So I see what you're saying about leaders and trailers bringing a gap. I'm just, I'm just saying that I hadn't looked at it that way, but it's another way to, you, you, after you teach scoop back, you can also, if there's some people that aren't getting it, you might, you might use it another, another way to explain, to explain it. There's another question back here, and then we'll make that the last one before we continue on. Kev Jordan, Virginia. Yeah, um, if you look at the definitions, um, it's the very last thing that's been defined right before you get into, uh, in the preface, right before you get into the, the definitions itself. And it's exactly as uh, these guys are explaining it. We took a lot of the ambiguity out of it. So we, we talk about that one-on-one -on -one relationship as far as looking in versus looking uh, away. So, yep, so it doesn't matter. If you're looking at anybody's anything, you're a trailer. Remember that Correct. expression? Yeah. In your sandbox. Yes. Last comment on this. Uh, there's a whole write-up here I just did last fall on leaders and trailers. Totally complete, totally comprehensive. The, that's one of the handouts on the side over there. Um, it's 37 pages. We need two couples up here again. Can we get boy and girl so we can really see, identify who's who? Continuing is a couple more things on Fan the Top. As a guest caller, what can you do with Fan the Top? Uh, past the Ocean, we have normal couples, we just call it Past the Ocean. So if you call Fan the Top from Waves as a guest caller, they're not going to do it. They're all going to do is spin the top. But if you say girls start Fan the Top, the whole world will do it. You know, girls start Fan the Top. So as a guest caller, that's one key way to do it. Uh, do a recycle. So we have facing normal couples. The second way is a guest caller, where you can call fan the top and it will always succeed. Everybody pass through. Do a U turn back. So we have half sachet facing couples. And we will call it this way box the mat, go. Fan the top. Girls the left hand and the boy move up. It has to succeed because the girl's right hand is occupied. The only hand they have left is, uh, remaining is the left hand. That will always work. As a guest caller, you can always call it that way, and it's always going to work. Let's get two other couples up. Can we get boy-girl couples? And let's score back up, score back up. Uh oh. <laughs> okay. And um, uh, face your partner. Turn by the left. Make an Alabama dollar. The men back up. And everybody stop. 
a nice little cute thing that you can call and you don't have to walk it as long as you have good directional calling is you can call fan the top from here because we know the centers is three quarters, the ends is one quarter. So three quarter plus one quarter is one. So if we call fan the top from here, everybody's going to wind up holding the same person they are now. Fan the top. Boy, three quarter girl, move up, take hands with the same person you just had, and they'll all do it. It gives you a little variety, and you don't have to stop and workshop the whole thing. Okay, square back up. We're now going to move into uh, the Dixie Grand. By the way, uh, there's another handout. The Dixie Grand handout that you've got is a salmon paper. There's another sheet. I thought it was stapled onto it. It isn't. So when you're done, come up and get this separate individual salmon sheet. It's also on Dixie Grand. To make this easier for everybody to see, why don't the uh, two girls right here exchange places you and and everybody stir the bucket twice. Oh, <laughs> I can't believe that. Must be a high level group. They all did a reverse stir the bucket. You said half, it's the same thing, right? So it's driving down the wrong side of the expressway to get there. You're still driving a car, but you're going to crash. So. We're going to go into fan the top. And, uh, why don't I say, you got to be fan, got fan the top on my mind here. Dixie Graham. And for years, this is how it was only ever called. And by the way, this is your own position now. I intentionally set them up as, as kind of yellow, goldish, because they're going to be my primary couples when we get into the site calling part. And I have them, but they're back to you, so they're your key couple, and you can see them. And of course, Mike and his partner are probably going to be the secondary. Um, for years, Dixie Grand was only ever called this way. Four ladies chain go. Just the heads roll away. And everybody join hands, circle to the left. Reverse back, single file. All the boys turn around. Dixie Grand, right, bull by, left, right, and Alan and left. And promenade home. And for years, that's the way everybody called it. And everybody said, well, I've done my Dixie Grand duty for the night. I've called my Dixie Grands and I go on to other stuff. Fortunately, in recent years, a lot more uses for Dixie Grand have come about. Uh, and we can use it from a variety of ways. It's fun for the dancers. I love Dixie Grand because it's forward, ongoing motion. I'll put Dixie Grand in 10, 12 times a night. And, uh, because the dancers love it. It's forward, ongoing motion. The handout on Dixie Grand up here gives you all the secret formulas that a lot of people don't know, and it makes calling Dixie Grand a nothing. In your site calling, you just insert these formulas, boom, you're right there. Most people don't know these formulas. So if you can call Dixie Grand using these formulas and being successful, then you're the only one in your block. And everybody says, well, nobody else is doing this, and this guy's doing it, this girl's doing it, so uh, uh, we're going to go back to them the next week. So let's, let's look at some things on Dixie Grand. First of all, Dixie Grand winds up, 99% of the time it's a left out of the hand after the call of Dixie Grand. It doesn't have to be, technically, we could use other things. But because Dixie Grand tends to be in a circular type motion, most callers just accept it's much more convenient just to go with the uh, left Alabama after the Dixie Grand. It's going to be much more easier that way. Now Randy can undoubtedly come up with some things where we don't have to call left Alabama afterwards, and I bow to your superior knowledge, but uh, I like to say that. So, uh, when we use it, and all these formulas are in that handout sheet, by the way. Um, are they called get ins and get outs, or what are they called? No. Formulas? Formulas. They're called formulas. Formulas. So, now it's important. Remember the primary couple, which is a couple of yellow, secondary, which is Mike and his partner. Sorry, I don't know your name. Kristen. Okay. So, the rule on Dixie Grand is you have to have one matched couple and one mismatched couple. One couple with their partner, and one couple not with their partner. 
let's have the uh, uh, head aside start. Senators pass through. Uh, pass to the center. Uh, I didn't do this right, did I? Center's right and left through. Now we're going to. So now we're going to give you the primer and the key site calling formulas. This is the parent position. Primary couple in the center, secondary girl behind, not with partner. And we can call it Dixie Graham. Remember this footprint I want to. Well, don't remember it. Do, do a Dixie Graham. Go right, pull by, left, right. Alum in left. Promenade, don't slow down. Heads wheel around, past the ocean, AC Ducey. Recycle, centers California twirl, and the centers go right and left through. I wouldn't necessarily call it this way, but I'm just setting them up. The second position, the flip of the first. Remember, we said the first position, primary couple in the middle, secondary girl behind, not with partner. Now we have secondary couple in the middle, primary man behind, not with partner. And it's the exact same thing. We don't have to walk the Dixie Van again, but that's, that's the flip of the first. Those are two key positions. You want to memorize those positions. Uh, centers pass through. Um, pass to the center. The third thing that's really good to memorize is any time the centers can pass through Alaman left, and that's what we have. Don't do this. But any time the centers can pass through Alaman left, instead we can call double pass through Dixie Grant. Now, don't, uh, did I say to go? <laughs> we must control our bodies. Okay. So, now the first time you call it, you're going to be in completed double pass through position. The leaders might hesitate. They don't know where to go because nobody's directly in front of them. So you might have to say the first time, leaders face in Dixie Grant. But the second, by the get, time you get to the third time you use it, you're never going to have to cue it. Do a double pass through. Leaders face in, Dixie Graham, right pull by, everybody left, everybody right, and out and left. Now that works great if you're a module caller, because you're a module caller at all sorts of times when the center's going to pass through out and left. Any questions on those? Those are the key places that you want to memorize. Now, Dixie Graham is a lot of fun. Let's have the uh, 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 heads lead to the right. Veer left, do, do an ACDC. <coughs> Ferris wheel. So we're ready for a Dixie Grand. What I teach my home dancers, and, uh, and sometimes on the road if I have a chance, most all callers, once they call Dixie Grand, then, we'll, then they will say the name Dixie Grand, and then they'll direction will cue it as a help to the dancer. Don't do it. The call will be Dixie Grant, right, left, right, out, and left. What's fun and it's what's been done around the country for a number of years by a number of groups is as the caller calls right, left, right, the dancers shout out with the caller right, left, right, and it becomes a big fun thing for the dancers. So let's all shout that out as we go. Dixie Grant, right, left, right, out, and left. The dancers love it because now they're calling the dance. Uh, I showed this last fall at a college school and a guy had a golf call dance that night and he showed that and it, it, it like changed his life. I couldn't believe it. Consider, consider doing that with the dancers as a fun thing. It gets them involved. We refer to that as funnels. Funnels. It's too, we don't understand those words. <laughs> Another place that Dixie Grant is good, oh. heads move forward, face the corner. And don't do that. Don't do this. If I would say, we have a corner box. We have a corner box. If I say, step to an ocean wave, and I say, go. Let's control our bodies here. If I say step to a wave and circulate, it, then you can call it Dixie Grand. But I don't want to call it that way, because it's what I call kerplunk calling. Step to a wave, kerplunk, 
boy circulate Dixie Grant. Instead, I want to dance them into a Dixie Grant. And this combination is a winner. If you call this, your pain will be doubled. So we're four bucks. So we're in a quarter box and we're gonna call relay the deuce. But what's gonna happen is the the relay the deuce is going to end in a quarter box ocean wave. So I can call the boys to circulate and do the Dixie Grand, and it all flows right in. The Dixie Grand takes advantage of the ends moving up on the, uh, from the Relay the Ducey, and it's a dream. So let's do a Relay the Ducey go. And be watching your primary, our primary man. And at some point, he's up to the, boys circulate, Dixie Grand right, left, right, and Alaman left. It dances beautifully. Yes. Now here's another factor. It's what I call presentation techniques. For any great choreography, you must have good presentation. Choreography is only 50% of the game. If you don't have the presentation, we know 50% great schools of failure. So you must have good presentation. So what did I do? I didn't say, I said relay the Ducey, and then as it was ending, did I say voice circulate Ducey? No, I said, I raised the volume of my voice. I said, boy, circulate. My volume of my voice increase was like a hand in the back of the boys to propel them forward. Because if I just said, boy, circulate, my normal voice, they're not going to hear it. They're still concentrating on the relay to do so. So in any of this, like the starting double pass through Dixie Grand, we do the double pass through. Anytime the centers can pass through Adam and left Dixie Grand, we do a double pass through. I would say, leaders face in. I raise the volume by my voice to propel the dancers through on the Dixie Grand. Questions or comments on Dixie Grand? If you are not using Dixie Grand or you're only calling it once a night from a memorized thing, I encourage you to consider doing this using Dixie Grand more, because dancers just love it. Now, okay, we need the mic. Where are you going to be a mic person? <laughs> you can't. You have a question? Yeah, I just uh, a comment on Ted Robbins, Southeastern Pennsylvania. Uh, when I teach uh, Dixie Grand, I say, uh, everybody who can pull by with the right, everybody who can pull by with the left, those who can pull by with the right. So I thought in my mind, is there a way to do it where only two people can pull by? And then I just thought of, if you're in a, what do you call it, a, a double pass through position, and have the, uh, and have the people uh, half a half sachet, or have them roll away, and then do a half sachet once and a half. Now you've got four single, like one column of eight people with two girls facing in the middle. So if I call Dixie Grand from that, two girls could pay, pull by, and then four people could pull by, and then eight people could pull by. And you start that from the normal starting Dixie Grand setup? No, no, I'm, I'm just, I ha, I'm not into the, the end result that you're doing. Oh, how come you're Can you set them up for that or not? I can set them up, but I don't know what to do when I'm finished. I just figured I can call it. See, my objective, I've only gotten as far as, can I set it up so that only two people can pull by? And I have this, so I have this, I can set that up so that two I don't, people I don't know the answer to that, but it would be interesting, and I would suggest playing with your checkers and see if you can, can do that. But the, the, I, I, my recollection, and I haven't looked at it for 10 years, I think I remember, it says that as you do this, you evolve to a circle. Isn't that part of the right, definition? Right. So I'm not quite sure in that setup how you evolve to a circle since everybody's in a Well, we, we aren't either. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm just, I'm just planning to see. So, yeah. So, now, if you come up with that, send it to me. Because I want to use it. Okay. And, and, and you know what? There, there's an unwritten rule in score dancing that says if you can get the dancers to do what you're trying, then it's legal. Right? And, and then, and I would, we might throw it under the gimmick catalog, right? Heads, go ahead and star through. And everybody do 
half of a half sachet and put the girl right in front of the boy, got a single file. So he's suggesting I'm going to bend the rules a little because on a Dixie Grand rule, it does state that your square will evolve into a circle as you're doing it. But if you wanted to bend the rules, we could, and then Dixie Grand is if you can, right pull by, left pull by, right pull by. So he's suggesting, would you all back up a little bit so we get some room? So the center two girls would do the right pull by, go ahead, and then a left pull by and then a right pull by, and everybody would be nose to nose with somebody. Nose to nose. Nose to nose. And then you can figure out how you're going to get out of this. Sure, I would say that would be perfectly legal. If you could get your dancers to go ahead and do that, that would fall under a, a gimmick category. That would be perfectly legal, because you could get them to do it. Go ahead and star through with this one. Don't give them that left hand. Star through, and bend the line, and you could probably resolve out of it this way quite nicely. Except the problem, of course, is you can't call a star through after the Dixie Grand there because it's two left hands in a row for the girl. Well, yeah. So but that would be a slide for you. Yeah. You could call a reverse star through. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's have the square square back up again. I want to be sure I get this in. Square back up the way you were. The beauty of Dixie Grand, remember we said it's two couples with their partner, two not. You are never more than 10 or 12 seconds away from calling the Dixie Grand at any time in your colony. Let's say you're going along, you're into the fourth or fifth tip, and say, gee, I haven't called the Dixie Grand tonight. I better shape up. Because circumstances just haven't worked out. The material just didn't work out for you. You can force the square to a Dixie Grand. And force is too strong a word. It's to uh, heads back out to the right wing line of four. Simon says, you don't need to know we really wanted to do it over before. Bo doesn't know right. Okay. <laughs> okay, so so I've decided I want to call Dixie Green and get up because I haven't done it for the first half of the dance. It's time for me to do it. So we have facing partner lines. So I know that I'm gonna get I gotta keep two couples matched and two couples not matched. So I'm looking to primary and secondary. What call do we all know takes us from partner lines to a setup where two people still have their partner and two don't. ACDC. So I'm going to call Pass the Ocean. ACDC. And this keeps my secondary couple together. So now I'm, what, two steps away from a Dixie Grand? I'm two calls away from a Dixie Grand right now. What are they? Explode the wave, go. Wheel and deal. And there it is. The key was to get, you can't have everybody with their partner, and you can't have everybody not with their partner, you can have two with and two without. And we have the, uh, did I, yeah, right, right, right. And so I can call it Dixie Grand here. Centers pass through, star through. So now they're strewn all over the place. So let's, everybody pass the ocean. Split circulate. So now for the CD we have, or, 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 or what. So let's say now I want to call uh, a Dixie Grant. So I'm just going to manipulate them there. I'm going to start a site calling resolve, and then I'm going to see what I got. I haven't memorized this. I don't know what I have. First thing we do, of course, we normalize, correct? So centers trade, and all the boys run around the girl. I see what I got. I see that I, I locked out. I got prime, secondary couple together, primary nut. I can call the pass through wheel and deal and do the Dixie Grant. That's a key thing to remember. You're never more than 12 seconds away from a Dixie Grand get out at any time when you're calling. In fact, this setup right here, uh, 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 Jerry Storer refers to this as a Dixie Grand line because all you have to do is call pass through wheel and deal and it's a Dixie Grand. Or you might have to add in a zoom, but it's a Dixie Grand line because two are with and two are not. Key thing to remember. If you remember that, pick up a few of these formulas and, and this handout, don't memorize all those, just memorize a few of them like I showed you. Uh, you're going to be calling Dixie Grand with no problem. You're just cruising along on your site calling. You can just insert the Dixie Grand and it's going to be wonderful. Any comments on any of that? Yeah, question down here. We need the. You want to. Where's the microphone? Oh, he has it. Okay. Gary Phillip from Maryland. If any of you use a chain three for a get out, it is a Dixie Grand. That's a Dixie Grand. Direct right. substitution. And I think that's in the in the handout as a formula. If you use a chain three, out of left and said call Dixie Grand. 
uh, pass through wheel and deal. Let's practice this one more time so we all leave. What are we going to shout? Dixie Grant, right, left, right, Alabama left. People will never forget you. <laughs> okay, promenade home. Other comments or questions? On yeah. Push it yeah. Once I figure out how the mic works. Mm -hmm. um, you are? I'm Dick Otis from West of Virginia. When you had your uh, face in lines with one paired couple and one paired not couple, does it matter? Does anything else matter? No. They gotta be normal, normal boy. If they're normal boy girl with one couple and one couple up, then you can always do it regardless. You get, you're, all, you're only like two calls, three at the most away from a Dixie Grant. By the way, let me mention also, in these handouts over here, in addition to the Dixie Grant handout, uh, and I mentioned the Leaders and Trailers handout, there's a handout on, I put a number of handouts over here because we haven't had room to put our handouts up in the lobby like we normally do. There's a handout for behind the mic. How many of you get behind the mic caller note service? It's a free note service online every other month from Australia, 60 pages, free. All you have to do is sign up. In the latest issue, they published my Dixie Grand article along with some other comments by Brian Hotchkeys, who uses a whiz of choreography, and he's added some extra tweaks and stuff in there. So, so that's in there available. Um, and what else, is there anything else over there that, uh, okay, everything I put up was taken, so that's great. Other comments on Dixie Grand, encourage you to use Dixie Grand. Yeah, Mike for, uh, Mike, I'm sorry. Have you ever, have you ever tried, you know, Who are you? Jeremy Butler, uh, Virginia Beach, Virginia. Um, have you ever tried using it with, like, same-sex couples? No, now that'll work. I mean, you could say same-sex Alabama, and uh, well, if you have a formula for that, you can't. Why are you, why are you finishing with an Alabama left all the time? That's my question. Uh, because the choreography that can be done after. There is, and if I was, if I had a plus DVD group or an advanced group, there's nothing wrong with doing that choreography. What I'm presenting here is, is for the masses to incorporate. But that's excellent idea. Yeah, same sex. Start with same sex Dixie. Start whatever and uh, do whatever kind of animal you know. Other comments from. Did you get into the Dixie Grands where you don't always have a No. Show us an example. Well, do the one that you started with, and we'll talk about the very first one that you said. This is the way it's always been. Okay, four ladies chain, heads roll away, circle left, reverse back, single file, boys turn around. Okay, instead of having the boys turn around, stay the way you were, guys. Okay, boys turn around again. And simply have the girls turn around. And now they'll start. Everybody finish, Dixie Grand. Whoops. Right? Left on the third hand, promenade. No, 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 on the third hand, promenade. Or you could say, on the third hand, right, left, right. Right, right. This is one that I like. Head slide through, pass through, slide through twice. Left Dixie Grand two thirds on the last hand, pass in and look in, and you're home. Woo! That's why he gets the big bucks. <laughs> That's very good. Do you have another? Let's all steal this. Write this down. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's simply a right-hand lady, just like what he's talking about, having primary and secondary and stuff. This is how we did it. Head square through two. Slide through twice. Notice the inside couple is the secondary. They're paired up and the others are not. Uh, what I did was work with the handedness. Uh, if I want to do an Alaman left, I'm going to say left Dixie Grand two thirds. So do a left pole by, a right pole by. Guess who's coming? Alaman left. Promenade home. You're there. So that's the same idea. Um, so the setup for that was.
secondary couple in the center, starting double pass through position, secondary couple in the middle on the far side from the primary man who doesn't have his partner. Primary man on the outside, not with partner, looking at the back of the secondary couple that's in the center on the other side of the set. That's the setup, and then it's two-thirds Dixie Grant, Alabama. Left Dixie Grant. Left Dixie Grant. <laughs> Left Dixie Grant. All because of handedness. Right. Okay, we have come to the end of the back. Yep. Question in the back. Mike Sikorsky, Apache Junction, Arizona. Uh, the dancers in my head may not be doing something correctly, so I wanted to see if it works because if my brain just exploded. Because I've never called what I'm about to say. But if I said Hesley right, Veer left, AC Ducey, Ferris Wheel, Dixie Grand, Alaman left. Yeah, don't forget to say that. And I do believe you stirred the bucket. Yeah. Hey! Very good. We want to thank you all for being here today. We want to thank our panelists, Ray Renzi, Randy Darney. Thank you all for being here.